This one uh, is pretty simple. Uh, one of the things that I think is great about the mid-shaft of the clavicle, it's uh, seem, patients really seem to tolerate surgery and it really does seem to help patients. But we do wanna talk about uh, the patients that you need to be treating non-operatively as well as those to consider operation for. So to start off, uh, just a quick case example. So this is a 24 year old male uh, dirt bike accident. This was his dominant arm. And hopefully by the end of this, we'll get an idea of how we should treat that patient. So the objectives primarily, uh, when should we consider non-operative management? We'll go over the indications for surgery. And then I'll kind of talk about some of the just little pearls or little tips as far as my favorite techniques when I am operating on the mid shaft of the clavicle. So as far as non-operative management goes, I would say you probably need to consider this in almost every patient. Uh, so if a, if a patient, even with the classic one that we're operating on says, hey, I don't want surgery, it's not wrong for you to tell that patient that's totally an acceptable uh, way to manage this. Historical numbers, uh, obviously 60 years ago, they had 22, uh, 2200 or so fractures and only three non-unions. I think with the most recent literature, maybe we would question some of that data uh, because more recent data would show uh, maybe a little bit higher non-union rate. The big study in 2007 out of the Canadian Orthopedic Trauma Society, JBGS, actually said that 75% of these would have good, good results. And just to remind ourselves, those were displaced fractures. It's not like all those fractures were non-displaced. So, but I would, I would definitely argue if the patient's got a minimally displaced fracture, uh, definitely consider non-op. But kind of going back to that Canadian orthopedics uh, study, what about the other 25% that don't do well? Uh, and we'll get to back to that in a second. <clears throat> so typically, how do I manage these patients? Uh, sling, I think there's good data to say that you don't need to be considering a figure of eight brace. Usually I'll have them doing pendulums pretty much right away with, as, if they can tolerate it. And then active and passive range of motion uh, up to about 90 degrees. And then, <coughs> excuse me, uh, maybe I've got COVID, uh, but uh, usually about non-weight bearing for six weeks. But then let's talk about uh, considering operation. So this was a non-operative treatment comparing uh, plate fixation of displaced mid-shaft clavicle fractures and 132 patients randomized to ORF versus non-op treatment. And what they found was that plate fixation, there was fewer non-unions, 3% compared to 14%, fewer malunions, fewer complications, and better outcome scores. And as far as the appearance, uh, despite the fact that you have a scar, the patients were more satisfied with surgery. Now, what about the risk factors for non-union? So this was another study uh, that, that looked at, can we figure out certain patients that may have higher risk for non-union? And what we found was that the patients that had displaced fractures, if they had a lot of comminution, and if they were smokers, they had a higher, higher risk for non-union. What about the malunion as far as predicting that patient? Looking at, looking at the patient and seeing ptosis of that shoulder, it will let you know that that may uh, end up in a symptomatic malunion if they've got significant shortening. And then obviously if the patient doesn't like what they uh, see in the mirror. As far as the indications for surgery, traditionally it was open fractures, neurovascular compromise, the floating shoulder. But as we uh, have advanced, I think the current indications would say if they've got significant displacement, and then obviously the things uh, that were traditionally, but relative indications for me, I think the polytrauma patient is a good one to consider operating on the clavicle. If they're a high demand patient, a laborer, if they do have ptosis, uh, if it's a high energy mechanism, I think those patients uh, certainly benefit from surgery as it usually correlates to displacement. And then if they're comminuted. Uh, real quick plug, I would say uh, this is one that I, I think most of us would probably consider an operation for on the left, but it can really convince you if you get an upright x-ray. And I definitely think that a lot of the x-rays that we get shortly after a trauma uh, with a supine radiograph, you'll see what you see on the left. But if you, if you sit them up, it can significantly show that uh, upright or that displacement. So definitely be considering getting that relatively soon after the uh, injury to try to help guide management.
As far as my typical uh, surgical setup, we have a, a long radiolucent uh, attachment to a regular bed. And so I reverse that and put the foot at the head. Uh, we call it a diving board. Usually I'll I actually just prep out just the clavicle, but you can drape the arm in. I haven't found a major problem by just isolating the clavicle. Oh, sick. And then uh, you want to turn turn the head and neck away from the operative side, ET tube out on the opposite side, small bump out of the, under the scapula, and then C-arm comes from the opposite side for me. As far as intramuscular pin, I would say it's really only for transverse fractures. Uh, a lot of times the second surgery uh, is required to, for removal. There's been some talk about doing that from the office, but I, I don't know if patients really tolerate that well. My preferred technique is plate fixation. Usually I use pre-contour plates. There's definitely some uh, thought as far as superior versus anterior plating. Uh, the major benefit probably is the irritation from uh, the superior plating. So maybe the, the less hardware or more hardware removals than superior compared to anterior. And then you don't want to do nothing. You don't want to do anything smaller than a 2.7 millimeter plate. And then there's probably some role for dual plate fixation in some fractures. Real quick thing, anterior versus posterior. If you look at anterior, as you get more medial, it's really going to get close to uh, getting close to uh, those neurovascular structures. So I, I do think superior is actually a little easier.